6. The Seven Psychic Circles The sum total of personality realization on a material world is contained within the successive conquest of the seven psychic circles of mortal potentiality. Entrance upon the seventh circle marks the beginning of true human personality function. Completion of the first circle denotes the relative maturity of the mortal being. Though the traversal of the seven circles of cosmic growth does not equal fusion with the adjuster, the mastery of these circles marks the attainment of those steps which are preliminary to adjuster fusion. The adjuster is your equal partner in the attainment of the seven circles, the achievement of comparative mortal maturity. The adjuster ascends the circles with you from the seventh to the first, but progresses to the status of supremacy and self-activity, quite independent of the active cooperation of the mortal mind. The psychic circles are not exclusively intellectual, neither are they wholly morontial. They have to do with personality status, mind attainment, soul growth, and adjuster attunement. The successful traversal of these levels demands the harmonious functioning of the entire personality, not merely of some one phase thereof. The growth of the parts does not equal the true maturation of the whole. The parts really grow in proportion to the expansion of the entire self, the whole self, material, intellectual, and spiritual. When the development of the intellectual nature proceeds faster than that of the spiritual, such a situation renders communication with the thought adjuster both difficult and dangerous. Likewise, over-spiritual development tends to produce a fanatical and perverted interpretation of the spirit leadings of the divine indweller. Lack of spiritual capacity makes it very difficult to transmit to such a material intellect the spiritual truths resident in the higher superconsciousness. It is to the mind of perfect poise, housed in a body of clean habits, stabilized neural energies, and balanced chemical function, when the physical, mental, and spiritual powers are in triune harmony of development, that a maximum of light and truth can be imparted with a minimum of temporal danger or risk to the real welfare of such a being. By such a balanced growth does man ascend the circles of planetary progression one by one from the seventh to the first. The adjusters are always near you and of you, but rarely can they speak directly, as another being, to you. Circle by circle, your intellectual decisions, moral choosings, and spiritual development add to the ability of the adjuster to function in your mind. Circle by circle, you thereby ascend from the lower stages of adjuster association and mind attunement, so that the adjuster is increasingly enabled to register his picturizations of destiny with augmenting vividness and conviction upon the evolving consciousness of this God-seeking mind-soul. Every decision you make either impedes or facilitates the function of the adjuster. Likewise do these very decisions determine your advancement in the circles of human achievement. It is true that the supremacy of a decision, its crisis relationship, has a great deal to do with its circle-making influence. Nevertheless, numbers of decisions, frequent repetitions, persistent repetitions, are also essential to the habit-forming certainty of such reactions. It is difficult precisely to define the seven levels of human progression, for the reason that these levels are personal, they are variable for each individual, and are apparently determined by the growth capacity of each human being. The conquest of these levels of cosmic evolution is reflected in three ways. 1. Adjuster attunement. The spiritizing mind nears the adjuster presence proportional to circle attainment. 2. Soul evolution. The emergence of the Marantia soul indicates the extent and depth of circle mastery. 3. Personality reality. The degree of selfhood reality is directly determined by circle conquest. Persons become more real as they ascend from the seventh to the first level of mortal existence. As the circles are traversed, the child of material evolution is growing into the mature human of immortal potentiality. 
The shadowy reality of the embryonic nature of a seventh circler is giving way to the clearer manifestation of the emerging Marantia nature of a local universe citizen. While it is impossible precisely to define the seven levels or psychic circles of human growth, it is permissible to suggest the minimum and maximum limits of these stages of maturity realization. The Seventh Circle This level is entered when human beings develop the powers of personal choice, individual decision, moral responsibility, and the capacity for the attainment of spiritual individuality. This signifies the united function of the seven adjutant mind spirits under the direction of the spirit of wisdom, the encircletment of the mortal creature in the influence of the Holy Spirit, and on Urantia, the first functioning of the spirit of truth, together with the reception of a thought adjuster in the mortal mind. Entrance upon the seventh circle constitutes a mortal creature a truly potential citizen of the local universe. The Third Circle the adjuster's work is much more effective after the human ascender attains the third circle and receives a personal seraphic guardian of destiny. While there is no apparent concert of effort between the adjuster and the seraphic guardian, nonetheless there is to be observed an unmistakable improvement in all phases of cosmic achievement and spiritual development subsequent to the assignment of the personal seraphic attendant. When the third circle is attained, the adjuster endeavors to moranchiize the mind of man during the remainder of the mortal lifespan, to make the remaining circles, and achieve the final stage of the divine human association before natural death dissolves the unique partnership. The First Circle The adjuster cannot, ordinarily, speak directly and immediately with you until you attain the first and final circle of progressive mortal achievement. This level represents the highest possible realization of mind-adjuster relationship in the human experience prior to the liberation of the evolving Morantia soul from the habiliments of the material body. Concerning mind, emotions, and cosmic insight, this achievement of the first psychic circle is the nearest possible approach of material mind and spirit-adjuster in human experience. Perhaps these psychic circles of mortal progression would be better denominated cosmic levels, actual meaning grasps and value realizations of progressive approach to the Marantia consciousness of initial relationship of the evolutionary soul with the emerging Supreme Being. And it is this very relationship that makes it forever impossible fully to explain the significance of the cosmic circles to the material mind. These circle attainments are only relatively related to God consciousness. A seventh or sixth circler can be almost as truly God-knowing, sonship conscious, as a second or first circler. But such lower circle beings are far less conscious of experiential relation to the Supreme Being, universe citizenship. The attainment of these cosmic circles will become a part of the ascender's experience on the mansion worlds if they fail of such achievement before natural death. The motivation of faith makes experiential the full realization of man's sonship with God, but action, completion of decisions, is essential to the evolutionary attainment of consciousness of progressive kinship with the cosmic actuality of the Supreme Being. Faith transmutes potentials to actuals in the spiritual world, but potentials become actuals in the finite realms of the Supreme only by and through the realization of choice, experience. But choosing to do the will of God joins spiritual faith to material decisions in personality action and thus supplies a divine and spiritual fulcrum for the more effective functioning of the human and material leverage of God hunger. Such a wise coordination of material and spiritual forces greatly augments both cosmic realization of the supreme and Marantia comprehension of the Paradise Deities. The mastery of the cosmic circles is related to the quantitative growth of the Marantia soul, the comprehension of supreme meanings. But the qualitative status of this immortal soul is wholly dependent on the grasp of living faith upon the Paradise potential fact value that mortal man is a son of the eternal God. 
Therefore does the seventh circler go on to the mansion worlds to attain further quantitative realization of cosmic growth, just as does a second or even a first circler. There is only an indirect relation between cosmic circle attainment and actual spiritual religious experience. Such attainments are reciprocal and therefore mutually beneficial. Purely spiritual development may have little to do with planetary material prosperity, but circle attainment always augments the potential of human success and mortal achievement. From the seventh to the third circle there occurs increased and unified action of the seven adjutant mind spirits in the task of weaning the mortal mind from its dependence on the realities of the material life mechanisms preparatory to increased introduction to Marantia levels of experience. From the third circle onward, the adjutant influence progressively diminishes. The seven circles embrace mortal experience extending from the highest purely animal level to the lowest actual contactual Marantia level of self-consciousness as a personality experience. The mastery of the first cosmic circle signalizes the attainment of pre marantia mortal maturity and marks the termination of the conjoint ministry of the adjutant mind spirits as an exclusive influence of mind action in the human personality. Beyond the first circle, mind becomes increasingly akin to the intelligence of the marantia stage of evolution, the conjoined ministry of the cosmic mind, and the super-adjutant endowment of the creative spirit of a local universe. The great days in the individual careers of adjusters are, first, when the human subject breaks through into the third psychic circle, thus ensuring the monitor's self-activity and increased range of function, provided the indweller was not already self-acting, then, when the human partner attains the first psychic circle, and they are thereby enabled to intercommunicate, at least to some degree, and last, when they are finally and eternally fused.